Hey there guys, welcome to something a little bit different on the channel today. I'm going to be going through and documenting and telling the story of a real true crime case. I've always had a huge interest in true crime, so this is something I really want to explore. I've got a game of FIFA on in the background for you guys to watch as well, but I also hope that you enjoy the story. Now, if this kind of content isn't for you, that's perfectly fine. I will still have my weekly videos that I always produce that are just FIFA, so don't worry, my usual content isn't going anywhere either. It's just in addition to what I'm doing at the moment. Now, also as well, please note that there are details of murder, cannibalism, and a mention of suicide in this video, so if that kind of thing triggers you, upsets you, whatever, please do not watch and please turn the video off now I also just want to say quickly I mean no disrespect if I mispronounce anyone's name in this video or in general like this is just some story that I found online that I've done a bit of research on and I hope that nobody finds offense in anything that I say this is about a lady called Leonardo Chanchuelli for the sake of the video I'm gonna to refer to her as Leonardo because I don't think I'm pronouncing her surname correct Leonardo was born on November 14th 1893 in Italy where she had a very troubled start to life she tried to kill herself twice in her younger years however obviously she wasn't successful and uh, she got married in 1914 however her parents were very disapproval of the marriage she wanted them to marry somebody else but she didn't she chose to marry this another man called Giuseppe now this is the point where Leonardo claimed that her own mother had put a curse on her the home was destroyed in an earthquake in 1930 so they moved to a town called Lariano I think it's pronounced like that where she set up a small shop selling cakes now here she was viewed as a very kind woman and a friendly neighbor there was a small town vibe where there was this lovely lady who who worked at a bakery selling really nice cakes friendly with everyone you know that kind of thing you know no one had any reason to distrust her everyone looked at her as a very kind nice woman now leonardo fell pregnant around 17 times in her life which is just staggering to me but very sadly only four of these children survived leonardo was told earlier in her life by a fortune teller that all of her kids would die young which is exactly why personally i would avoid a fortune teller but this led her to being protective of her four surviving children of course she visited another fortune teller who had provided her with more grim news she said that a future of prison and a criminal asylum was awaiting for her now Leonardo was a very suspicious woman she took all of these warnings to heart and she was very concerned about what she'd been told and she saw herself a little bit as a fortune teller as well so she definitely believed what she was being told and she needed a way to obviously stop this becoming true this is where we come on to the murders so in total Leonardo committed three murders as she believed that a human sacrifice was required to protect her favorite son her favorite son had just been enlisted into the army and it was about to become well, World War II was about to start and uh, obviously she was very concerned that he was going to die. Like I said, she saw herself as a bit of a fortune teller, so she thought that the human sacrifice would protect him. So people in the town also saw her as a fortune teller and the three women that she killed were people that had come to her for help in, in you know in some description and her first victim was named Festina Setti who came to Leonardo for help finding a husband she wanted love she wanted a relationship so she thought she'd be able to help her and point her in the right direction Leonardo told her to go to a town called Pola where she would find her partner there but she warned her not to tell anyone of this information a bit sus to me she then convinced her that she should write letters back to her family once she arrived in Pola to tell them that she was safe again a bit of a weird thing to do why would you need to mention that you know why would you not just go and, and you know you wouldn't need to you know write back and say I'm safe anyway on the day that she was due to leave Seti visited Leonardo for a final time she was drugged with, by a glass of wine and then Leonardo murdered her with an axe her body was stored in a closet and then chopped into nine pieces and her blood was stored in a basin this next statement was taken directly from Leonardo's memoirs which described what she did next with the body it's pretty gruesome so quote I threw the pieces into a pot added seven kilos of Corsic soda which I bought to make soap and stirred the whole mixture until the pieces dissolved into a thick dark mush that I poured into several buckets and emptied into a nearby septic tank. As for the blood in the basin, I waited until it coagulated, dried it in the oven, uh, ground it and mixed it with flour, sugar, chocolate, milk and eggs as well as a bit of margarine. Kneading all these ingredients together, I made lots of crunchy tea cakes and served them to the ladies who came to visit, though Giuseppe and I also ate them." End of quote. 
very, very disgusting. <laughs> like, wow. Uh, there were also several reports that Leonardo had inherited Seti's life savings. However, I wasn't able to completely verify this. I did do a bit of research on it, of course, but I couldn't find anything that completely said that this is true. But there are no numerous different things that people that are saying that this is the case. So, uh, although it can't be proven, it can't be verified, it does look like it possibly is true. Now, the second murder was carried out in a very similar fashion. The uh, victim was called Francesca Sovi, and she had, had uh, found a job at a school in Piacenza, I believe it's pronounced, thanks to the help of Leonardo. So, like Seti, Sovi visited Leonardo the day that she was due to leave, on September 5th, 1940. And she was murdered in a very similar fashion, which is also described in Leonardo's memoirs. And it is thought that Leonardo made about 3,000 lira out of the death of her second victim. And now her final victim, uh, and I do apologise for this because I do know that I'm going to pronounce her surname wrong at least. Uh, her final victim was called Virginia Cacchioppo, um, who Leonardo had claimed to have found work for as a secretary in Florence. As with the two previous victims, she had agreed not to tell anyone about this information. And now she came to visit Leonardo just 25 days after the previous victim had been murdered, and she unfortunately met a similar fate. This again is from taken from Leonardo's memoirs, so she, quote, ended up in the pot, like the other two. Her flesh was fat and white, where I had melted it and added a bottle of cologne. And after a long time on the boil, I was able to make some most acceptable creamy soap. I gave bars to neighbours and acquaintances. The cakes too were better. That woman was really sweet. End quote. Now, if that just doesn't like send shivers down your spine, like how could you describe someone as really sweet? Like, oh God, that is just awful. She managed to inherit Virginia's jewellery and up to 50,000 lira, which again, I'm not entirely sure how she managed to do that, but that is just absolutely nuts that so she's getting away with all this and obviously inheriting loads of money as well. However, there came a point where Leonardo's sister was getting more and more suspicious of all these women around her were beginning to disappear. And she went to the local police station. She went to the superintendent uh, in Reggio Emilia, I believe that's pronounced. And they, uh, he and the police force quickly began an investigation. It didn't take an awful long time for her to be arrested and Leonardo was quick to confess to her crimes. She went on trial for murder in 1946 and chose to remain unrepresented. As the prosecutor was laying out her crimes and her methods, she actually stood up in court and corrected the prosecutor on the details. She said that, um, you know, the prosecutor was saying one thing and she was standing up saying, no, 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 you're wrong. I did this, this and this, which again, like the gall of this woman is just crazy. Um, she was eventually found guilty of murder and she was sentenced to 30 years in prison and three years in a criminal asylum, just like the fortune teller had predicted all those years ago. Now, she died in 1970 of cerebral, cerebral apoplexy, again, if I pronounce that wrong, I apologise, after serving 24 years of her sentence. Wow, like what a hideous hideous woman like how awful all these victims and her neighbors thought that she was a really friendly lady you know working down at the local bakery and it turned out that she was this downright evil woman who clearly had no conscience whatsoever and uh, she was just happy doing her thing killing people and thinking nothing of it and then like i said to just be so callous to stand up in court and and just you know detail her own murders like that like clearly no remorse there whatsoever but that's the end of the video guys i do hope you enjoyed it i know it's a little bit different but if you stuck around and watched it i really appreciate it thank you so much for watching and um, please do drop a like and subscribe and uh, i will catch you guys later